Hello everybody, David from Flash by V-Cyclonaut here for part two of uh, valve adjustment installing cams. And why I'm trying to stare down this little hole with my camera is to show you that that is the mark, if we back up, um, right below where you, where you fill the oil, there's a little screw there here. And when you take that off, you could see that mark. And what that mark represents is cylinder one being at top dead center, because that is what everything's based off of or how you install the cams anyway. Uh, with basically any motor. Sometimes I used to put a screwdriver <laughs> down the spark plug hole um, and you know when you move the motor around and make sure that's a cylinder that cylinder is top dead center but we got that nice little mark. Take this off that's the easiest way to turn the motor over and I also have the spark plugs out of the motor. Uh, no point in fighting the compression this makes it a little easier to turn over. So let's go on to the next step. So after we get position, piston one and top dead center. So basically when installing cams, we always have marks on them. And then we're gonna line those marks up with the base of the, the cylinder head. Um, and this is one of those steps that if you didn't have the manual, this would be really hard to do. So you can see that um, what they want you to do is line up the mark with the edge of the cylinder head. And why this would be hard on this bike is because these marks are actually on that decompression device. Normally they would be on the sprockets and one would say in and one would say exhaust. And you would know that the ones that say in and exhaust that you're lining up that intake one on the intake and exhaust one on the exhaust. But these don't say intake and exhaust. So what you have to do is look at the orientation of the cam lobes behind it. And you can see that the cam lobes from that mark are pointed down the first set are pointed down to the right then the second set are pointed straight across and if you look at here that's what's telling you it should be there is the one cam lobe there is the other so that's how i know that this is oriented correctly so before we put the cam in or the first cam in let's take a look at what we got so this is the side of the motor motor uh you probably wouldn't have this off normally i just have the clutch out because i removed the slipper clutch um so you can see here that this is the cam chain and it rides down on that sprocket down there. And this is important because the cam spins half the speed of the motor and that is what's gonna rotate the cam. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the exhaust side cam in first, lining up those marks like I talked. And while we do that, we're gonna keep tension on this cam chain up. If you didn't have this cover off and the bike was still in the motor, you wanna be careful when you remove the cams that you keep pressure on this up so that it doesn't come off that bottom gear kind of hard for it to come off the gear but it can and then you're going to end up taking this case cover off to hook it back up so it's easier just to keep some tension on it so you can see i have that mark right there lined up with the casing and i have the the cam chain pulled taut and i got the cam just laying in there and those cam lobes are pointing in the direction that it says in the service manual so what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to loosely put the cap the uh, cam cap on there and bolt that down so the exhaust cam still in still lined up all tightened down so the next one we're going to put in is the intake cam and you can see like i was talking about you got an i and an e so we're going to line up the line that says i for intake on the top of the valve cover or head cover uh, just like we did with the exhaust cam and we're going to keep tension on the cam chain towards that same direction so now I have that intake cam, intake cam lined up on right on the cylinder head. This is pulled tight, so that's where it would be. What I've found over the years is that I need to move this one tooth uh, farther under so that when I put the cam chain tensioner in, spin the motor around, that it'll be lined up. Otherwise, it keeps coming back one tooth off, and it's extremely frustrating. So I'll do that next. So now you can see that mark is clearly under the surface, and I am going to put that intake cam uh, the cap on and torque them down so the intake cam is torqued down the exhaust cam is torqued down the lines are where i think i want them next thing i gotta do is screw in uh, the plunger on the cam chain tensioner now these are one of those automatic feed ones the stock ones that have a fair failure rate on pretty much every manufacturer's. Um, I like to stay with the stock ones for e just ease of maintenance. They're not that expensive, so if one fails, I just replace it with another stock one. 
Um, as far as orientation, these go into this hole here on the side, or this does. Uh, on the manual, it doesn't say anything about orienting the cam chain tensioner, but I always like to put dots up, so I'll put that dot up. But it does say on that gasket that's behind it, make sure that's oriented the way it is, that it's up and to the inside of the motor. So what we do is we take, um, that's a three millimeter Allen, and we put that through the center hole and we turn it clockwise and the plunger will come all the way in. You have to leave the wrench in there because when you pull the wrench out, it's gonna spring out. So we leave the wrench in there. We install this into the motor. And then once it's torqued down, then we pull the three millimeter rat, or yeah, three millimeter Allen head out of the hole. So I have torqued the cam chain uh, tensioner bolts uh, yesterday I misspoke said 7.2 foot pound, inch pounds, which would be ridiculously light. It's 7.2 foot pounds, which is about 86 uh, inch pounds, which is what I have them set to. And so everything's in place. We're going to pull this out and we should hear it. It winged out a little bit. Didn't make a bunch of noise, but you could hear it. Now this is all kind of tense. All right. So now the moment of truth is what we're going to do is we're going to use a bolt on the end of that to spin the motor over about three times counterclockwise and we will recheck our cam timing. So I've rotated the motor over a few times, have the mark lined up and I come over to this side and I outsmarted myself. The exhaust side is where it's supposed to be and the intake side is one, two, it's off too far down. So I'm just gonna take it apart, retime it again and start with both of them even with it, I'm gonna pull out my cam time tensioner first and then just redo everything until it's right, you know? So, all right, good on me for <laughs> getting it wrong first time and trying to be slick. So I'm taking it apart, put it all back together and I'm gonna show you that I did get it. So there's the mark for number one cylinder at top dead center. There is, doo -doo -doo, there is our mark. You see it? There it is. There's the mark on the exhaust cam. There's the mark on the intake cam. Everything is lined up, and that means my cams are timed. So uh, it took me a couple tries, but, you know, no big deal. You just get it till it's done, and you know it's right. Uh, I think one of the things that scares people with doing valve adjustments is they're afraid they're not going to know if it's right. And it's really obvious when you look at it whether it's right or wrong. So uh, if you're fairly mechanically savvy, make sure you invest in a service manual and uh, just take your time with it. Remember, if you're watching this, you're probably not a professional mechanic, so you're not getting paid for it. Uh, this is the pleasure of working on your own stuff. So take your time. Who cares how long it takes you? Take your time, get it right, and then uh, sit back and take some pride in it because not a ton of people have adjusted um, their valves on their motors with shim under bucket. So uh, thanks for watching, guys. The next project I'll be doing on the MT-07 We'll be syncing up the throttle bodies on this once I get it in there. Um, it's always a good idea to sync your throttle bodies after you readjust your valves in case it threw them off a little bit. Uh, so I'm going to Georgia next week to see my dad. Love you, dad. And uh, after that, I'll get this motor in and get that project going. So thanks, guys, for watching. Remember, hit that subscribe or like button.